the gearbox that we are going to build is perfect for some type of RC vehicle and this is exactly what I wanted to achieve. I'm going to build snow tank again this winter. I already working with the design. The point is something like this. It will look different for sure but this snow tank or tractor will have 4 independent tracks and the turning happens like the body from the middle is turning. But this tractor isn't the video topic, the gearbox is. This gearbox will have 8 to 1 gear ratio. And for your information, you can use this gearbox wherever you want, all files are free to download at tanks. The link is down below. And this video is sponsored by PCBWay. But speaking about printing, gearbox body I tried to print with Creality Ender 3 and for material I used PLA. If you have at least Ender 3 size printer, you can print this gearbox. I don't know what happened here. For my second attempt, I use Creality Sermon D1. It's my main printer because it has peak printing volume and it's reliable. This is the most important thing for me. Printing the body took me 16 hours and around 300 grams of filament. No supports are needed. The lead for the gearbox is printed with my Creality CR10 V3. It took me 11 hours and 150 grams of filament. For material I also used PLA and a bit support materials are needed. So we have the gearbox body and lead, now we need to print gears. But with what material? Well there is a lot of options. PLA, ABS and ASA, PTG, nylon, carbon fiber nylon and PC. Every material has pros and cons, but I have a lot of experience with 3D printed gears and I am not afraid to say that 90% of the time you don't need any other material than PLA. Of course there can be situation when you are for example going to use the gearbox on the hot summer day outside. Then the PLA will not work and of course some time can be stronger material than PLA needed. But for this gearbox PLA should be absolutely fine. But before we are going to build the gearbox, quick ad from this video sponsor PCBWay. If you wanna build this gearbox by yourself but you don't have 3D printer, then PCBWay will help you out. PCBWay service is just so simple to use. Upload your 3D model, choose material and if you have some specific need, leave the comment. And this is basically it. PCBWay has also CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding. I have used their CNC service a lot. For example, some projects I need some acrylic leads, but because I don't have CNC, it makes sense to order this from PCBWay than buy a whole machine for one part. PCB Way is your 3D printing and CNC machining one stop solution. Back to the video. For this build, we need 3D printed gearbox body, 4 different gears, 2 spacers, 7.75 DC motor, 3 8mm shafts, and lead. Those 3 shafts, 2 are 8x70mm and 1 is a bit longer, 8x120mm. I'm using a steel rod for this, but it can be aluminium or any other material, as long as the diameter is 8mm. Now about building, we start with 775 DC motor. Actually I did a design flaw over here. My first plan was to attach 775 motor to the body with two bolts, uh, really basic. I even designed those two cuts to get the drill bit nicely to the bolts. But in this case, I have no chance to attach the gear to the motor shaft. <laughs> but luckily I have really easy solution for this problem. Instead of using button head bolts, I am going to use socket head bolts and pull and allen gear. That's how I can screw the bolts at a slight angle and the problem is solved. So I had to install the motor and gear at the same time, line up the holes and secure the motor in place as I described before. When the motor and the first gear are in place, we can continue with the next gear. Gear number 2 is this with a really long neck. Assembling those two middle gears is absolutely easy. Just push the 70mm shaft through the gears and set in place. Before I can install the last gear, I need to push two bearings into the holes. It's really satisfying how the bearings fit in there. Installing the last gear is a bit different. The gear have to be in place when I push the 8x120mm shaft through it. It's not going through the gear really easily, so a bit force is needed. Uh, 
And by the way, it makes way more sense to install the middle gears when the first and last gear is already in place. Right now, nothing holds those middle gears inside the gearbox. The lead is for this job. When the lead is on top of the gearbox, then those two gears will move nowhere. But before we can get to that, there are some things to do more before we can call this gearbox ready. It's time to melt threaded inserts to the output and input gear. To the output gear, I used M4 threaded insert. This one was easy, but for the input gear, I had to use a way smaller one, an M3 threaded insert to be exact. And because this one is so small, it was a mess. Following my attempts. If you are thinking what a noob I am, camera was between my hands and I didn't see shit what I'm doing. And I messed this one up hard, but luckily on the other side of the gear I can try again. Now the dreaded inserts are in and cooled down. I can screw set screws to the inserts and the output and input gear are nicely and strongly secured to the shafts. I also melted two inserts to the front of the gearbox to hold the lead on even stronger. To screw the lead to the gearbox body, I'm using 5 40mm M4 bolts and two 20mm M4 bolts. The gearbox is ready and I am ready to run this for the very first time. I am using one DC motor speed controller and 3 cell LiPo battery. This gearbox is unbelievably loud, vibrating hard and does not run smoothly. So I didn't continue torturing this gearbox without lubrication. I opened the lead to add some grease, but turns out I was a bit too late. The input gear has already suffocated. Because of the friction it worn out and this gear isn't usable anymore. That was quick. Thankfully the other gears was still fine. So of course I had to print a new one. This time I used my GD Deck X Plus to print the input gear with some bad boy filament. Uh, nylon I mean. First I printed it by using carbon fiber nylon, but then I was thinking it was pretty stupid idea because it will wear out the PLA gear next to it. So I ended up using regular nylon. I changed the gear off camera because you just saw how I did it. I also used a bit of epoxy glue to glue those middle gear shafts to the gearbox body. The only reason why I did it was my great idea to run this gearbox without the lead, but this didn't happen, because now I nicely lubricated gears with the grease. I mean nicely. So I tried to run the gearbox really slowly to not make a mess. I put the lead back on.
Now this gearbox runs a bit better, but it's not even close to what I wanted to achieve. So I have to fix some design flaws. Three days later. This is the old one and this is new. Looks pretty similar, but no, not at all. It's 3 mm longer. And the gears are now true double helical gears, not herringbone gears anymore. But let's talk about the extra 3 mm. This is actually the thing that fixed all my previous problems. I basically add 1 mm between every gear, so 1 extra mm over here, 1 over here and 1 over here. Now the gears have more clearance and they don't smash into each other so hard. I also added the option to use threaded inserts to this side of the gearbox too. But if you are asking why did I change the gears from herringbone gears to double helical gears, basically there isn't any real reason except I wanted to try print toast. There are no performance difference between double helical and herringbone gears. The only reason why those two type of gears exists is manufacturing. It's way easier and cheaper to manufacture double helical gears out of metal than herringbone gears. But when you are watching some 3D printing videos, you always see the herringbone gears, not double helical gears. The reason for that, 3D printing is exactly opposite. It's way easier to print herringbone gears than double helical gears, because then you have to use a bit supports between the te teeths. Sorry, I have really difficult to say this word. But anyway, the gearbox runs now really smoothly. It's way quieter, even without any lubrication. Still, I added a bit of grease, closed the lid and printed wheels. I am going to build 15 minute design air cigar that can drive only one direction. Wheels I printed using GDTEC X Plus and rims I printed with Creality Sermon D1 with TPU. Okay, here it is. It's not air cigar, it's gearbox with wheels. I'm using a cheap AliExpress DC motor ESC and my Flysky receiver and transmitter. So let's give it a go. I like those cheap ESCs, they are all the time burning. I was thinking, f*** the shit, and I took the same speed controller that I used before. So fun, this was just to prove the concept. Now I have the gearbox and I'm going to continue with my snow tank, snow tractor, snow blower, maybe design. Who knows what it will turn out. Like I told before, free 3D printing files you find down below to build it by yourself. I hope you enjoyed the video, I enjoyed making it, like always, almost. So thank you for watching and happy end of the November, bye.